first bat rep is going to be uh, Gristle 1 tier. It is tier 4. It is two units of warriors, a impaler, slag, and pyre troll, fell caller, and then a min unit of scatter gunners with the UA, and then two units of fire eaters. That gets me the tier benefits are hoof it on both of my warrior units. Um, and then Crystal can still make fell calls. I get plus two inches to my deployment zone. And I could redeploy the pig units if I wanted to. I went second, so there's really no need. Uh, my opponent is running uh, Belthazane, the chick that jumps in her own war beast from Legion. Scythian Zerial, uh, full unit of Croaks, full unit of Hex Hunters and War Spears with their dude. And a unit of the spawning vessel. I don't know all the names, I apologize. It also has a uh, Naga over there. The scenario is destruction. I took Effigy of Valor and he took, we believe it was Arcane Wonder. It's the one that lets you upkeep one, or uh, upkeep a spell for one less. He and I both couldn't remember it and uh, that's where we set up at. All right, in this picture, he is advanced up. He took first turn. He prayed the Fire Eaters on the far right-hand side of the screen. Um, pretty much everything just ran that he had. He put uh, a spell on the Croak Raiders that gave them corrosion to all their attacks. I don't remember what it is. And I believe he had a spell up on his caster. Um, I'm not certain what that was either. I do apologize. The pot didn't get any corpses or anything and everything else just ran. All right, here you have the bottom of turn one. Uh, everything is pretty much run up, and then because of hoof it, advanced another six inches or so. Um, the warriors all advanced, and then fit fever, yeah. Swift-footed, I can't talk today. To get the additional two inches and then after everything had activated and hoof it moved up to where you see them now. Um, I sort of got a little bit log jammed with my warriors because I wanted to keep a lot to, to log jam him out. However, that also meant that I got sort of messed up with two units of warriors. You'll see a couple of proxies in here. The fin blades and the highwaymen are actually warriors and caber tossers. Uh, the fin blades being the caber tossers because they all have reach weapons anyway. Um, my fire eaters all assaulted. I put some damage into the war spears, didn't kill any, but with eight damage boxes, I needed some good spikes and didn't get them. And then killed a couple of uh, toads. The war beast all just ran up. Gristle advanced and put hoof it onto the <clears throat> fell collar. And then bled three because she didn't need the three fury anymore. She then continued on from there and. Uh, I'm sorry, the scatter gunners advanced up at a full run, and I pretty much set up here for my turn two. All right, this is his top of turn two. A um, lot of things happened, and several of my guys died. I also made a good number of tough rolls. On the far right hand side, the hex hunters and the uh, War Spears cleared out the la the three actual um, Fire Eaters I had over there. Um, on the left hand side, the Fire Eaters were drastically thinned by shooting from both the Croak Raiders and uh, it ended up being a Naga back there in front of his tape measure. And all the tokens you see that are sort of the off blue, the convergence tokens they are all corroded or oiled or both he ran out of corrosion tokens because he upkept the spell where he could keep corrosion on his weapons for his croaks so just about everything in my front line is corroded uh, Zuriel came over and initially cleared out a lot of guys uh, and then we realized he was out of control area so he couldn't have forced for the secondary shot so we rewound and he wasn't able to do quite as much work. Um, incidentally, he then moves his Scythian over behind his pot, which did get three corpse tokens this turn, and proceeded to just hang him out over there. Uh, Belthazane's 
beast whose name I can't remember, I'm sorry, came over and did his animus where he could do the section of uh, cloud there that if you enter you take a point of corrosion damage. And then Belthazane herself came over and just hung out right there on the wall. Um, that's pretty much everything. So on this turn I realized that I can now start damaging the objective which is oiled uh, by his own croak raiders. The, I also realized I could get to three points at this turn if I could kill that and then dominate the zone. So to that end, my I had to move a couple of order of activation issues out of the way. Um, moved up with uh, my my pirate troll and shot around into the objective, and then moved up gristle and feeded, which allowed everybody all friendly models to make an additional attack during their activations melee attacks. And enemy units couldn't receive orders, and they could then make a advance at the end of the entire turn ignoring free strikes um she then cast uh cataclysm or i'm sorry rift into the objective and managed to one shot it after a little bit of damage from both the pyre and the slag troll uh scatter gunners moved over took a couple pot shots at some of the uh hex hunters and actually connected and the ones they hit they killed I think it was two or three of those. Uh, the warriors in front it consolidated up and just continued to eat into his front line. The warrior group on the left turned to deal with Zuriel. Uh, he took a charge from one caber tosser and a couple of warriors. Uh, they prayed for uh, plus two mat and damage. And they knocked him down. Didn't kill him because I could hit him all day long. But my damage dice were just not doing anything at all for me. Uh, even with the secondary attacks from the cavers, I wasn't able to, to take him off the table. But he is knocked down, and he's outside of uh, Belthazane's control area. So, feet move, sees me uh, consolidate to where I'm at now. I managed to clear the objective. I'll dominate for three. And I moved my caster back towards my objective just to get a little bit more distance from the hex hunters and everything on that side of the table. Um, if I can hold this turn and not get anything in the zone, I'll go to two at the end of his turn and would win. So, sorry for the blurry picture here, folks. Um, I didn't say in the last frame, I survived a lot of corrosion rolls through either tough or just corrosion going off on the last turn. Um, he activates, he, uh, Zuriel is out of control area there on the left. He is knocked down. He actually does frenzy when he is knocked down, and I had left a caber tosser in front of him. We looked it up, and according to what we could determine from the rules, if he's supposed to frenzy, he would have to sacrifice move or action to get to either the closest enemy model or to attack it, whichever would be better. So he ended up sacrificing his action, or I'm sorry, his movement, and stood up. Um, he then killed the one caber tosser that was there in front of him and his activation ended. Uh, the rest of the turn saw him trying to clear all the trolls that were in front of him. He cleared a good number of them. The pot got several more tokens. Or I'm sorry, the pot was already maxed out so it couldn't get any more tokens. He ended up getting log jammed because he couldn't get anything into the zone. He couldn't trample over my medium bases with his scythian. Um, he did manage to clear my pyre troll off the table with uh, Belthazane's beast. And he had to back up just a little bit because of Gristle's feet. He couldn't cast any spells. Um, once he backed up and did Eruption of Spines, he did a lot of work clearing out some of the zone, but he still just could not clear enough to get anything into the zone. Um, he then ran over with his uh, War Spears. He assaulted one of the Scatter Gunners I had over there and killed him. And then proceeded to move his pot as far up forward as he could. And then spawned a uh, shredder which you see standing right in front of gristle uh, the shredder then charged at gristle was not able to kill her because i had too many transfers and it's gristle blood song versus a shredder um he then proceeded to end his turn at this point because he didn't have anything else he could put in the zone so at this point all i need to do to win is kill that shredder if i don't manage to kill that shredder he'll get he'll prevent me from dominating the zone a second time he will also then have enough stuff cleared by the time he comes around again that he should be able to put more stuff into my zone 
Oh, Belth uh, Belthazane had feeded and was putting shots into Gristle and managed to do about five or six damage between everything, but he mistimed his feet. His Hex Hunters had already charged and were not going to get the benefit of her feet for the magic attacks. So on my turn, I do exactly that. I do a few other activations first. I send, activate the Warriors on the left and send a Kaber into Zuriel to knock him down again because I didn't like him standing up. Um, and that way, in case I failed to clear him, at least I wouldn't be dealing with Zuriel inside of my lines near my caster. Um, then I proceed to ignore everything else and uh, take one Kaber and hit the Shredder. Um, not killing it amazingly enough. My dice were bad. And then I move up with Gristle and Resounder smites him into the ground repeatedly and he dies. At this point the game ends because I'm at two point or I'll be at five points at the end of my turn. I don't have to activate to do anything else. In a tournament I could have seen trying to clear a few more models out just for army points but at that point in the day we'd already played this. Um, both of us agreed we were pretty close to full time had we done it on clock. We had not because this was just a funsies game. Uh, you know, I would need to work on time management and unpacking this list. As you saw, I was getting log jammed with my own stuff. Uh, last turn he did kill a, uh, the last of the fire eaters, but they did their job. They, they took a while to die. Um, thoughts on this list? It's a lot of fun. It's not the dude spam that Malorian normally does. Uh, his original list would have included three units of warriors and caber tossers, one with the Stainer Bear and Piper, two full units of pig bushwhackers, and I think a couple other things, not all of which I have. Um, but I did enjoy the list. It is a good scenario list. I, my opponent and I both, we were chatting after this game, we were both very surprised at how far and how fast I could get up the field at the top or at the bottom of turn one. Um, he said he'd, if he had known that, he would have sent his Croak Raiders further into the zone because he stopped them about half an inch out of the zone, expecting me trying to stay outside of my threat ranges with the reach uh, cavers I had. But at the end of the day, it was a fun game. I learned a lot of stuff. And let me know what y'all think. I'm going to try to do some more battle reports with this. Um, I'm sorry if the pictures are blurry. I was using my iPhone to take these and normally my iPhone does really good pictures But apparently it's just not translating with the software. I'm using right now uh, But you know the picture quality will improve as I determine if it's better just to use camera or to use my iPhone But comments welcome below and uh, Mr. Malorian here is the ad adapted version of your list that I ran and really enjoyed it. I see why you like the swarm because after I got him lock locked out of the zone, it was pretty easy for me to think that I'd won. Now he is playing Legion. I was expecting him to do some tricks to get inside of the zone, um, but it just ended up pretty well for me. Uh, he did state had he known the speed of the list, again he would have ran his Kirks in further, and he probably wouldn't have put his Scythian behind his own uh, his own line there. He would have left him out on the flank where he could have come into the zone. And I just don't have heavy hitters enough to clear him because the cabers, yeah, I can knock him down, but that doesn't mean I'm going to be able to finish him off. But at any rate, let me know what y'all think, and uh, feel free to look, leave comments below, and like and share.